advice those children. Once upon a time, we got swallowed by Monstro the whale. Wow. Monstro is the very same whale that swallowed Pinocchio. So don't you worry, folks, he was a cool little boy. He built a fire deep down in the belly of Monstro that was so hot, it made him sneeze his tail right off, creating our very own magical entrance right into Storybook Land. And making Monstro half the whale he used to be. But as they say, where one tail ends, another begins. If you look over on the left, you'll see the cave of the big bad wolf. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't know how to swim. So he can't get over to the other side where the three little pigs live. Where Fiber made a thousand strong, Fiddler out of six, and Practical, well of course he did practical thing, get built his house out of 100% wolf fruit. If you look over on the left, you'll see the quaint little English village where Alice lives. One golden afternoon, she followed White Rabbit down, down, down that rabbit hole right there into Wonderland, where things got curiouser and curiouser. On the right is London Park. Peter Pan, with the help of Tinkerbell and her pixie dust, flew Wendy, John, and Michael Darling right over the park, on their way to Neverland, where they never, ever had to grow up. And just up ahead is the mysterious city of Agrabah. It's full of enchantment and wonder. Princess Jasmine lives in the palace above, and down below, that is the busy marketplace where her and Aladdin first met. Now, I know they say Aladdin is the Prince of Thieves, but I hear the only thing he stole that day was Princess Jasmine's heart. Aww. We are now sailing under the same rose-covered arches that Aladdin took Jasmine over, sideways, and under, on a magic carpet ride into a whole new world. And just like they sing in that song, every turn is a surprise, and do I have a surprise for you. Keep your hands, arms, and fingers inside and don't touch anything, because we are now entering the Cave of Wonders. Legend has it that if you close your eyes and make a wish inside the cave, it just might come true. I made a wish. Did somebody wish to see where Snow White lives? Because on the right, you'll see the cozy little cottage she shared with the seven dwarves. And just beyond that is the jewel mine where those seven dwarves like to whistle how they work. On the left is the beautiful French chateau Cinderella once shared with her evil stepmother and two wicked stepsisters. But of course she doesn't live there anymore because with the help of her fairy godmother and some bippy boppity boo magic, she now lives up in that pink and gold palace with her Prince Charming, living happily ever after. That just goes to show folks what a good pair of shoes can do for a girl. Now, turning the page into our next chapter, on the left we have our giant patchwork quilt. This is inspired by Walt Disney's Silly Symphony Lullaby Lamp. It's comprised of 23 different desert flowers, and in case you were wondering, yes, all of the plant life here in Storybook Land is 100% real. It's just shrunken down into a miniature size in a process known only to Tinkerbell and a few of our lucky Disneyland gardeners. The plants here, they grow no more than one inch per year. A few of them over 150 years old, and a few were even planted by Mr. Walt Disney himself. Now, if you look ahead on the left, you'll see the quaint little humble home of Mr. Mole. And right next door is the not-so-humble home of Mr. Toad. It doesn't look like he's home right now, though, folks. He's probably off on a wild ride of Fantasyland to nowhere in particular. On the left are the three Dutch windmills from Walt Disney's The Old Mill. That one in the center is the one that sheltered the animals during the Great Storm. And just up ahead is the Alpine Village where Pinocchio lives. Right there in that wood carving shop near the water is where Geppetto made Pinocchio. And with the help of the Blue Fairy, he was able to achieve his dreams of being a real live boy. No strings attached. Now on the right you'll see Prince Eric's ship. It is docked on the sandy white beaches where Ariel took her first steps on land with her very own human feet. But of course, before Ariel was part of our world, she was part of another. 
under the sea. If you look on the line, past the waterfall, you'll catch a glimpse of her old home, the kingdom of Atlantica. But just like all stories, ours must come to an end, too. As we approach that dock, please watch your hands, arms, and fingers on the dock side of the boat. And on my magical count of three, we will all stand up together so we don't tip the boat. And nobody has to go in finding Nemo the hard way. This is a real boat. That is real water. And if you fall in, you will get real wet. Once again, my name is Daniel. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I hope you enjoy the rest.